Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at uploading data from a Power Apps collection directly into Flow. Once it's in Flow there's a massive amount of things that you could actually do with this data but today we're going to look at how to get it there not so much as what you could do with it. There's a, a question in the community about this exact topic on how to get collections into Power Apps uh, into Flow rather and in the past you had to do some fancy footwork to get it there uh, you could use a for all and then upload it in multiple requests which isn't ideal or you could strip it into various components by using comma separated values but that's also not, not exactly what we're looking for but with the introduction of the JSON function in Power Apps it's now a lot simpler and a lot easier so I thought I'll take this opportunity to show you what could be achieved with the JSON function and upload the data into Flow so let's get cracking. Right, so the, let's first go and create a brand new Power App. And uh, we're not going to have anything pre baked for this, so we're creating it from scratch. And like most solutions in Power Apps, this is going to start off with a button. So let's create a button that's going to create collection. And if we go to just make that a little bit taller. And then on select, we're going to do a simple clear collect and we're going to call this call test and we're going to pass it to records to, to create into the collection so the first one we're going to have name Donald and surname Duck and then we can create a, another record just copy this so put a comma over there, add another line, and let's call this Mickey Mouse. Alright, so let's run this. Let's format text. Still love this function, so it makes it a lot easier to format the text. So let's let's run this. And let's go and have a look at our collection. So there's Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse, name and surname, all looking good. Right, so now we're ready to actually go and create our flow. And to do this, we're going to create a brand new flow again. So we're going to create an instant flow from blank. And we're going to use Power Apps as a trigger. Right, so let's go and say there's our Power Apps trigger. It's looking good. Let's give this a name just to start off with and say test collections. Alright, so there's our trigger for Power Apps, and now we can go and insert an action. So, the easiest way to get information from Power Apps into Flow is to ask it for it. So, let's go and so we're going to declare a variable or initialize a variable, um, and then we're going to call that var collection. And if you have a look under data types, you'll see there's one called an array. Alright, so that seems to be very tempting and let's actually choose that and the value for this before we go and say ask in Power Apps let's just go and rename this action to something a little bit more meaningful so in it for collection right so if we now go and say ask in Power Apps it's going to give it a little bit more of a meaningful name so it's going to say in it for collection underscore value and that's then the parameter that it's going to prompt you for in Power Apps. So let's go and save this and let's see if this works. If we go into Power Apps, just wait for that to save. If we go into Power Apps, let's create another button. We're now going to trigger this flow. We go to Actions, Flows, wait for it to populate. It hasn't populated. There we go, Test Collections. Now the moment we want to go and add that, it's going to give us an error that, and it's going to say it's a registration error. So I suspect that this is not fully supported yet by Power Apps. I, I suspect so I haven't been able to get this to work. But what you could do is now, instead of having that array item in the, the variable, you can just change that to text and then pass it the JSON for that. So you don't have to restart anything. We can just go into here and so we're going to pass it a text string we don't need to change anything over here just save this flow go back into Power Apps and I'll just re-add this flow ok 
Okay, it takes a second or two. And now it's ready for you to pass um, the parameter to it. And you'll say you'll see that it now says uh, init var collection value, and that's the name of the parameter that we, we specified. So to pass that whole collection uh, or the whole set of data from that collection into flow, we're now simply going to pass it the new JSON function. The data is going to be uh, the call test collection and then we're not going to specify any parameters to it. We don't need to for, for this test. So all that we need to do is this little formula over there. So if I go and run this now, if we go into flow, you'll see there it ran, it ran successfully. If we open up this flow run, we can actually go and track what it got from Power Apps. And if we extend that, you'll see that there's the actual value that got passed to flow from Power Apps. We can now copy that value copy that and we can now tell flow what to expect from power apps in future so that it can define the schema for it and that it can actually use the information in that data so what we're going to do is we're going to say add an action and we're going to use one of the data functions it says pass json should come in a second so there's a data operation, pass JSON. We're going to use the content that we get from that var collection, which we've uh, specified in this variable over here. And for the schema, we don't need to go and type that out. We could just go and paste that value that we copied earlier into here. It's going to basically uh, put the, the data in here. Make sure that you've got the, the leading and the tailing, uh, tail characters in here to tell it that this is an array. That's very important. If you go and click on done, it's going to type up the schema for you. You don't need to worry about that. And then from here, you can actually go and use that data. So let's say for whatever reason, you would want to send an email. Um, let's just say send an email using Outlook Connector. Should come up in a minute. Here we go. Send an email using Office 365 Outlook going to send it to myself for this test and then uh, if I can just get my email address right there we go it's better and now in the subject we can go and say test and now we can go and add data from that collection so you'll see there's the pass JSON um, action that we had over here from here we can go and select the, the fields that it extracted from JSON so if I selected the name property you'll see that it automatically puts it in an apply to each because it knows that it's going to get multiple values in the array from Power Apps. So if we go and save this, uh, before we do, it's going to add a body to it and we're going to just add the surname to the body for whatever reason you might want to do that. So let's save that flow and now we're going to run this Power App, we'll trigger this button in Power App again. Here we go, it's finished. Let's go and have a look at the second flow run. It ran two seconds ago. And if we go into the detail, you'll actually see that it ran apply to each and it ran it twice. One for Mickey Mouse and one for Donald Duck. And then if we expand that, you'll see there's the email that got sent with the detail from the JSON data. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how easy it is to use the new JSON function in Power Apps. Uh, JSON is a beautiful thing. Once you've got it in, when, once you've got any data in a JSON format, it's very easy to pass it between systems. And then, as long as the destination system can understand and read JSON, you can then extract the data from there. So it's it's a very simple and easy, and also it's quick at runtime. JSON is very efficient. So if you haven't worked with JSON in the past, there's actually some very good online resources available for it. I'll also post a link to a video we did about a year ago to just give you a quick introduction into JSON. And um, that was actually part of another series of videos, but just have a look at the first few minutes of that, that video. 
um, to just give you a quick introduction into JSON. So thank you very much for watching and if you haven't done so please subscribe and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Cheers, bye bye.